back up. In this video, I'm fortunate to be flying the T6, the Texan, or as the Canadians call it, the Harvard. The flight began in Burlington, Ontario, home of Spectrum Airways, Steve Thorne, and the Flight Chops Channel. It was my chance to fly an airplane that I'm not familiar with and not particularly comfortable with. A chance to prove that an airplane is an airplane is an airplane. My check pilot for the day was Dave Carrick from the Canadian Historical Aircraft Association. And what I'm trying to show you in this video is that even though I knew essentially nothing about this airplane, I approached it the same way that I ask my students to approach the 172 in their first few hours. Oh man, this is amazing. I mean, I, everything's just military quality. That's not something I'm used to. I'm excited to go fly it. My philosophy about airplanes, at least up until this flight, we'll see how it comes out afterwards, is that an airplane is an airplane is an airplane. And even if we have to use super heavy pressures on the rudder, I'm expecting that this is going to fly like an airplane. Um, it does, it absolutely flies like an airplane. I would not, well, it's not a standard tail dragger in terms of how it behaves on the ground. Got it. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, you're absolutely, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Like, yeah, it's yeah, just an airplane. It's an airplane that puts speed over the wings yeah. and see how it moves, right? RPM, you have control. I got the flight control. And I'll tell you when you can climb. Uh, you want me to stay here at two? Yeah, stay at two for now. Well, first of all, unless it's absolutely necessary, make sure you have a super light grip on the controls so you can actually feel the airplane. Yeah, you're right. It tries to roll right. Yes, she does. Oh, and don't forget about your trim wheels. Okay, thanks. The rudder is probably way out, so I'll flip it to closer to neutral. It'll help. That's not too bad, an elevator turn. Can I just do some shallow turns? Yeah, give us uh, about 20 degrees to the left and we'll follow this road. Uh, this road series is about perfect. About right here? Yeah, it's perfect. I'm gonna try to just feel these rudders a little bit. Yeah, sure. That was too much even, wow, okay. Yeah, it really, it, 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 the input varies with the input on the on the ailerons, but usually they're fairly heavy. Yeah. The ailerons on the elevator though, they're not like, I mean, it's not like it's really that heavy on the controls. Right. I think it's kind of nimble, but I'm used to it, so. Yeah, I don't you? think it's, so far so good. It's not, you know, it feels like, uh, you know, it's a plane. Right. So what you see me doing there is trying to get a feel for the control harmony, that is how much rudder is required when I actuate the ailerons. Remember that a little bit of aileron will cause you to roll slowly, but a lot of aileron would cause you to roll rapidly, and the amount of rudder required depends on how much aileron you're using, whether you're rolling in or out of a bank. So one of the first things I do when I get into a new airplane is just kind of get a feel for that harmony. And this is also something I ask of my students. I call it coordination roles. Whether we're just starting in flight training or working on proficiency on a flight review, just to get a feel for the rudders, we'll slow the airplane down so that relatively large aileron inputs are required to begin with. And then we'll use ever faster roll rates to try to get a feel for when and how much rudder is required. This is what it looks like on a typical lesson. Okay, so the idea here is just to we're going to look in a moment at sustained right rudder pressure, like we said, in a climb or in slow flight. But right now, let's work on rolling in and out of turns. So the more aileron you use, the more rudder that is required, right? So as much as you're comfortable, use some fast roll rates. Okay. Kinda, yeah, roll. There you go. So that's good. And then back to the left. Okay. 
There you go, like that. And see if you can kind of feel in your seat as if there were two hands, like try to keep the pressure even. If you feel one side more than the other, that's the rudder you need. Okay. Right, so thank you. Right. To the right, more rudder, more rudder. Yeah, so the other clue is if you feel a lot of pressure on the aileron, then you, it's, there's more rudder required. That was a good one to the left right there. Got the guy in All sight, right. thank you. So what I'm trying to get Serge to do here is really feel in his seat when and how much rudder is required. Here it is on another lesson with Serge. Um, let's start with some coordination rolls. Like just want you to move the ailerons pretty rapidly, big rolls right and left, and try to get the rudder in there. So a big hard roll right now, as fast as you can to the right now. There you go, like that. Nice, a little more rudder you needed on that one. Good, so let's try back to the left. Still a little more on that one too, try back to the right. And it's a little later, it's like here comes the aileron, there goes the rudder. Okay, so it's after the... It is, because the aileron has to create the lift and then drag is a byproduct of okay. lift. So it's almost like you crank on it and rudder's a second later. Try again, okay. rudder, more rudder, more rudder, like that. Good, left, try again. More rudder, more rudder. There you go, like that. Feel that in your seat, how it locks together? Yeah, it yeah. feels better. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Okay, so that's what you see me doing when I get into the T6, all in anticipation of the aileron rolls we're about to perform. Find up here. I got your airspeed, you have control. I got the flight control. Remember, no power, just... So you just pitch up for it, eh? Yeah, pitch uh, up 30 degrees. All right, you ready? Yep, ready to go. Now commit to it, fully commit, and stay with it, stay with it. On this first one, you're going to see me make two mistakes. One is not nearly enough right rudder, and that's probably because the motor was pulling against me. Remember the left turning tendencies. The second thing is I unloaded the stick at the top at the inverted position. But I worked both of those things out on the second try. Here's how it went. No, no negative G. Okay. You're good. You're a little off heading, but not bad. All right, so I, I shouldn't release like that at the top. Not necessary. Not not no, Warbirds. Typically, it's not good for the oiling system in these airplanes. Okay. Try the other way. You got lots of airspeed. So All right, you ready? Bring it up. Now that's what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, keep it coming. Nice. Very very nice. Little rudder out of the bottom. Very good. All right, aviators, that's all for this video. My thanks to Dave Carrick and Steve Thorne. Be sure to check out his T6 video on the Flight Chops channel. Also, if you're interested in following along with more of my adventures, you can find me on Instagram at LearnTFP. For those of you interested in longer format lesson videos, the kind of stuff you saw here with my students, but a lot longer, uh, you can find that stuff on Patreon at patreon.com slash LearnTFP. And I've got podcasts coming every other week, so when you're waiting for your next video, check out Aviation's longest-running flight training podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please show our sponsors some love and check out their products. Without their generous support, it would not be possible to spend the time it takes to make these videos and bring them to you. The music you heard in this video was composed and performed by Michael Bazaar. To get notified of uploads, please subscribe and hit the bell and share amongst your friends. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe, fly your best.